Welcome to Frequency Matters, a special edition of the RF and Microwave Update. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with Henry Comrie of Keysight Technologies. Good morning, Welcome. Pat. Thank you. So Henry is a general manager for the Components Analysis and Accessories Center of Excellence at Keysight Technologies, yep. right? That's correct. And uh, there's a kind of a growing interest now in millimeter wave and terahertz frequencies. Uh, why is that? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, the technology has evolved. So CMOS, for example, is allowing F sub T's in, in uh, ICs up to greater than 500 gigahertz. And on the commercial side, it's moving from not just a, only a research, and for example, atmospheric sciences and weather uh, research and things like that, but uh, it's applications in communications. So small cell, uh, wide data or wide bandwidth data communication uh, opportunities and of course the resolution provided by these millimeter wave and terahertz frequencies provides opportunities in, um, in imaging. So in this imaging could be in pharmaceutical applications for example looking at tablets and looking at the coatings that are on tablets or industrial processing uh, even in manufacturing applications looking at the yield of, uh, of various items that are being manufactured. I've even uh, seen a, a manufacturing floor where they were manufacturing chocolate bars using terahertz imaging techniques wow. to monitor the, uh, the quality or rather the consistency of the size of the product as well as the ingredients in the product. So it's again, it's a combination of the technology being advanced and the, uh, the, the drivers in the market uh, driving more and more research and investment into the technology of terahertz applications. And then finally, there's a little bit in aerospace defense as well, right. primarily um, security applications because the terahertz waves allow you to image human beings and uh, or what they're wearing I should say more than uh, because it does not go through water right. so um, so it, uh, so hum it it's uh, provides some privacy as well in the uh, in the security area so again lots of uh, technology advancements as well as commercial application driving the investment Wow how do the use and measurement of terahertz impact the wireless markets well one of the nice things about terahertz is the small wavelengths and so, for example, at 300 gigahertz, you're talking a millimeter. Wow. And as you move higher in frequency, they just get smaller. So that resolution can be particularly valuable. And that helps in imaging applications as well. But in the wireless area, these small wavelengths make for small form factor equipment. So you can imagine a small cell, wide bandwidth data networks, maybe in a, in a very densely populated area. We're, we're moving data across small spaces, but lots of data, right. very, very fast. So, um, so that's that's uh, one of the areas that, that's helping in wireless communications, and um, it also impacts some other markets. And we talked about imaging, but there's also semiconductors that are clearly going to be part of the wireless market. And uh, when you look at imaging, you're able to uh, with terahertz. Uh, applications or terahertz stimulus response and, my, and spectroscopy types of applications, you're able to see doping profiles and, and can see the semiconductor material and whether it's been fabricated properly or not. So all that together will impact the wireless industry tremendously. So what would be some of the challenges in deploying a system like that? Well, in uh, terahertz, it's a little bit of a challenge to generate power, right. as you can imagine. So generating power at these frequencies can be difficult, and uh, even generating power at microwave frequencies up, up to 50 gigahertz uh, is, is not an inexpensive game. So at terahertz, it's, it's even more challenging. Routing the signals effectively and efficiently can be challenging. And there's lots of different frequency bands. You know, as you go from, from 100 gigahertz up to uh, one and a half terahertz, you have different waveguide bands. So connecting the uh, waveguide bands and the flanges and, and the wavelengths are so small on the order of microns and, and millimeters, any skew in the, in the, uh, in the connection yeah, a can make a big difference. So um, th those are the, are the major challenges. It's generating that power. And then once you, if you do have the power, of course, there's loss. Yeah, um, the propagation loss. The propagation loss through the atmosphere. That's one of the reasons that terahertz is used in atmospheric research because in, in, it's, it's above the, the Earth's atmosphere, so you don't have all that water, so it does propagate much better. So it may also be useful, for example, in airplane to satellite communications or satellite to satellite. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Keysight's history and experience in the terahertz frequencies? Oh, sure. So uh, Keysight's uh, an Agilent before that and Hewlett Packard, and, and just as an aside, so Keysight is the, the original part of Hewlett Packard, right. the, the electronic tests and measurement. 
And back in the, uh, in the late 80s, we introduced our first millimeter wave equipment. And these were uh, up converters and, and signal generators up into the V and W band or up to 100 gigahertz types of frequency ranges. We then did broadband network analyzers uh, from, from 10 megahertz up to 110 gigahertz. We continue to develop measurement science to work with those, so it's not just the hardware, but uh, trying to uh, not just make S-parameter measurements, but add other measurements as well to take measurements on active devices, such as uh, amplifiers and frequency converters at those frequency ranges. Uh, and over the years, we've developed uh, wonderful partnerships with companies like Virginia Diode right. and Olson Microwave Labs, or VDI and, and OML. And we partner with them very closely to take uh, our test equipment up into the, to the terahertz range and all the way up to, we have uh, installations now uh, using VDI equipment up to one and a half terahertz and that uses their equipment as well as our, our equipment to drive their extenders to higher frequencies and then we're able to highlight our measurement science in multiple applications. Right. For, uh, one example is uh, we have a one and a half terahertz spectrum analysis capability at a few installations worldwide. So even though it's kind of a new area that's catching on, you've been in it for a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny when we, in, in the late 80s, we, we talked about it from a marketing perspective. We actually called it the millimeter wave event. <laughs> and uh, and, and we've, we've been waiting. And I think that it's taken a while for the research. And, and it's really driven now that it's commercial. It's not research. Right. It, it is, they're commercial drivers in communications. And the nice thing about the, these frequency ranges is there's spectrum available. Right. And it's wide bandwidth. Ton of bandwidth. Yeah. Ton of bandwidth. Key. So, and but it, we still have to overcome some of those technological hurdles of generating the power, routing the power, right. down converting the the signals to IFs that we can handle and manipulate and really analyze data effectively. What are some of the challenges in obtaining measurement, uh, high accuracy measurement in that area? Calibration. <laughs> So trying to calibrate the measurements can be difficult. And uh, when I talk about calibration, it's not just calibrating out systematic errors of your, of your test equipment, but also having accurate power. How do you know what the power level is at 750 gigahertz or at one terahertz? What equipment do you have to make those measurements? So we've been spending a lot of time trying to understand how to do that effectively, to calibrate out the errors in the measurement to make accurate measurements. The second challenge is these these measurements that I talk about. So an S11 measurement or an S21 measurement is one thing. When you want to make a distortion measurement or you're making measurements on, on an active type of device, so some of these IC guys have Fs of Ts well over 500 gigahertz and they want to model and characterize their, their DUTs over huge frequency and high frequency ranges. How do you make those measurements? And because now when you take a general purpose test equipment, extend that frequency up, Right. multiple frequency bands, there's lots of signals, <laughs> lots of signals uh, bouncing around. And how do you manage those? How do you effectively cancel the, the harmonics out, uh, find the spurs, reduce the spurs, et cetera? And so maybe you can finish up by telling us, you know, kind of how Keysight's uniquely positioned to be able to address all the measurement challenges in this area. Oh, I'd be glad to. So I, I think that the main thing that just comes to mind right away is measurement science. That's what we, we pride ourselves on is uh, ability to, to calibrate a measurement, to set up the measurement properly, make the measurement, analyze the data, and then improve the measurement. And, uh, and this measurement science is encapsulated in, in application capabilities, whether it's gain compression, distortion measurements, spectrum analysis, um, noise figure, et cetera. But uh, th that's the, the first thing that, that we bring to this, this opportunity in the marketplace. Second thing is, is decades of our hardware. We have our own gallium arsenide foundry in, in Santa Rosa, California. Yeah, yeah, I visited. A very impressive place. I mean, and you guys kind of you make most of your devices and your components, and you put them all together, build up a full system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, in our PNAX network analyzer, there's over uh, 30 unique ICs. And those people that develop those ICs are developing newer designs at these higher frequencies, trying to model those. So we have, in, in essence, our own customers just next yeah, door, yeah, 50 meters it. from my desk. And uh, we're able to, uh, to continue to develop the measurement science as well as the hardware right. uh, moving forward. Well, great. Thank you so much for talking to us on Frequency Matters. We appreciate you coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you.